Okay, guys, in this week's Title Tuesday, I played F4 only, Birds Opening, and I wanted to show you this specific game because my 2700 opponent decided to play the From's Gambit. And guys, this is the line that prevents many people from using the Birds Opening. I know it has a very bad reputation. You know that I play it uh, often. I've played it a lot in this, uh, in this channel. And the only thing you have to know, guys, is the little there's some tricks that they rely on to make this to punish this opening if you're aware of them you're going to be fine now this g5 g4 i'm sorry you have to know it guys you have to know the theory but guess what in this specific line or opening knowing the theory pet pays off because not many people face the birds opening so you if you play it often you're going to be more in your elements than any of your opponents now here i know that d5 is not the best move and I was trying to look for the best way to, to handle it. Now, the main trick in this line, guys, is when they take on d6 with the bishop, they are threatening to do knight d4. And if the queen takes, then bishop d6, this covert attack. This is the main, the thematic tactic in this from scambit. So if you're aware of it, you know how to handle it, you're going to be fine. It is very comfortable to be up a pawn and then your opponent trying to justify the sacrifice right so all i know is if things get too crazy for me i'm going to let go of the pawn give it back just to survive like here i know that we're going to do knight d4 and i had ways to protect it i could have done pawn c3 pawn e3 but i decided to just go ahead and play knight e4 and the idea simple i'm thinking if i take on d6 i remove any kind of threats and then i go into an end game that i'm going to be comfortable so knight e4 was played, of course, knight d4. And now you could do bishop e3, you could do so many things, but I decided to just go knight d6. If they take with the pawn, they get isolated pawn. But now after c3, knight has to go back and I'm going to take on d6 anyways. Guys, of course, you could play uh, this in many different ways, but the most important thing is to be aware of the little tactics. So there we go. Now, just develop as quickly as we can. Notice that we have the pearl bishops. Uh, the only thing I don't like is my isolated pawn on e2, but that's not, that's not a problem. Now here, I was like, do I want to keep the pearl bishops or do I want to destroy my opponent's pawn structure? Well, bishop d6, and now it is a matter of who develops the fastest. So I knew that I wanted to castle to activate my rook and indirectly, I'm putting pressure on the d6 pawn. Next thing I need to do is develop my f1 bishop. Once I do that, we have to play chess. So knight e4. It's nice to see that it comes with a the tempo. Then we gotta decide pawn e3 or g3 to develop the bishop. And again, once we do that, this is a very comfortable position for, for the white pieces. There we go, fully developed. And guys, another uh, thing I liked about this game is that you're going to see this concept of activating the pieces quickly, but also not only it's not only about bringing rooks to the open files. We've talked about this many times. Also, we gotta pay attention to the open ranks. As you see, my rook is now hitting through the fourth rank. At some point, I could even go to the fifth rank. And I think I did that. Did I do that right now? <laughs> I think I think so. So there you go, rook d5. Again, I really like this uh, this idea, just putting pressure through the ranks, going after the weak pawns or the base pawns, and look at my rooks compared to the black rooks. Pretty passive, and that feels really, really well. Now, they're putting pressure on my pawn on e3. I'm not concerned. Now, Always looking for those little details, guys. If I go knight d6, I was thinking if the rook takes, well, I get a knight for free, but they could always take on with the king, right? So that's something that it didn't work, but I had it, I had it in mind. Now, don't forget the g4 pawn is hanging as well. So something to keep in mind. Now here, I decided to take just to not give my opponent any chances. That pawn on g3, if I leave it there, it could become trouble later. But probably it was a good idea to leave it there since it was isolated to capitalize on it after the fact. 
So here we go. We continue to put pressure with our rooks. We're getting low. I'm, I'm getting low on time. So of course, mistakes are going to be <laughs> occurring. Pawn g4, just fixing that pawn on f6. And now, like I always tell you guys, you either play fast or you play well. So again, let's activate the, the rook. And here, just because I was low on time, I'm playing a pretty good opponent. I didn't want to push for, for too much. But um, probably if we just try to put pressure, uh, improve our pieces little by little, we should be able to, to convert this. But again, you see here I'm doing g5 just to simplify the game. I just don't want to lose. And maybe that's the wrong approach. But again, we're low on time, and you know that uh, the, the, the clock could be used as a weapon. So here we go. I think here we just repeat it back and forth. And one more time, I knew I was not going to lose this, but I didn't want to risk it, guys. So the game was a draw. I'm going to show you quickly the evaluation. You can see me not so bad. And the opening, you can see that every move is, uh, is fine. Like It looks weird, but this is on the control. Here, I was already on my own. And it seems like c3 was not the best move. e3, so that the bishop was uh, ready to develop. Now, bishop d6, not the best move. Bishop e5, I see the point now. f6 is forced for them. And then the knight doesn't really have that natural square. But it is what it is, guys. <laughs> so, bishop d3, okay, it was better to keep the bishop. Then rook e4, I was so proud of that move. But, okay, rook d5 was a good move. Again, putting pressure through the fifth rank. And, and you see here, this g3, again, I should have pushed the pawn, get a pass pawn, and then put pressure on the isolated pawn, but that's what makes the difference, guys. That's, that's why we're not at that next level yet. <laughs>